let's say you have an object in your game, like so, that you want to kind of pick up or maybe have it as an item, whatever it may be, and you want a floating effect where it is essentially floating up and down. Well, that's what we're going to explore in this video. So as the base of our uh, game here, all I have is a camera, directional light, a grid map, an environment just to make the scene look okay. Now, our main uh, object here is going to be the sword. Now, the base of this can be anything as we're going to use position to make it float. Now, I do recommend usually when you do this, usually you should try to float the mesh itself only. Now, for example, if you had an area 3D as the base of this, I would float the sword itself instead of just the or the entire thing. Because, for example, in the area 3D, you will have it, uh, the area itself floating as well. So that's not always good. So for this example, I'll be adding this to my mesh. I'll use a built-in script, and here's my code. Now let's take a look at what we'll want. What we'll do is we're going to create two functions. One will be called float object up, and the other will be float object down. So essentially, these functions will be two different functions where one will come float our object up, and one will float our object down. Now, by default, I'll set the ready to call this function first. Now, to do this, it's actually quite easy. All we need to do is create a tween. Now, if you no, don't know how to do that, all we need to do is create a tween like so. So we say variable tween is equal to create tween. Then we'll just tween the property. And we can do this by tweening the property, the object, which is self, which in this case is a mesh instance, will tween the position to the position plus one on the Y. We'll do this over a period of 0.5. And then for now, ignore this as I'll kind of get back to that in just a second. But now what we want to do is I want to add a tween callback. Once this tween is finished, I will now call the float object down. And essentially, I'm going to do the exact same thing, but I'm going to float down negative one on the position. And of course, I'll call up the float object up. Now on the trans, of course, you can kind of do whatever you'd like for this. Now let's see what this looks like without the trans set. Let's close our script and play. And you'll see we have a nice floating object. Now this is cool, but it's very immediate. So if you want to set the transition of the uh, trans, which I personally, I'll show you which one I like. Sorry, not ease. You want to set the trans. Personally, the ones I like are sine and quad. Uh, I find sine to be a tiny bit smoother depending on what you're doing. Uh, so let's take a look at what this looks like. So now it kind of has that uh, bouncy floating effect where it's not immediately stopping at the top and going back down. It's kind of floating in the air and bouncing between the two positions. So this is how we create a nice floating effect in our game. Hopefully this helped. If it did, do hit the sub button and do keep in mind that this was a solution for one of my weekly challenges. And if you'd like to join, join my subscription. Uh, email sub down below. It's completely free. All you need to do is enter your email and I will send you a weekly challenge every Sunday. So I'll see you all hopefully next week.